Hello, and welcome to the Author's Den podcast, where we help authors share their message to the world. Join us as we feature unique conversations and get ready to be inspired. Now, let's get started with the show. Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome, everyone. I am your host, Lizzie, uh, for the Author's Den podcast. I am one of the hosts of many great, great hosts that are here on Author Den. And today, everyone, I have a special uh, author, uh, an incredible story, a uh, great book, obviously, and uh, I am very, very excited to be able to speak to our guests uh, all the way from beautiful, uh, one of the beautiful states, uh, Chicago, uh, city of Chicago, which is the Windy City, as they call it. Uh, we are excited, very, very excited. So for you to have an idea, I'm just going to read uh, a little bit of biography. That way you're a little bit more familiarized with the authors. It's not just about you know, the accolades and all that uh, great, great uh, background, but also about the person. So we want to make sure that you enroll with us, you uh, participate with us, and don't forget that this is uh, a pre-recorded um show and uh, it will be downloaded here as you can hear it uh, today in our Authors Den podcast which all the information. So we're going to be speaking to Salar Ahmed Khan. Uh, he's an MD, NBA, FACA and FCCP, uh, DTC, uh, D and uh, M. CPS. He served as an attended physician pulmonologist and uh, psychiatrist in the uh, Akadichi, Pakistan. And this is uh, back in 1985 to 1997. He's a chief medical, was chief medical medicine intern director of medical services and intern hospital director of uh, Al Al uh, Mihab General Hospital under the Ministry of Health in Saudi Arabia. This has happened back in 1988 and 1993 in association. Is it as also as an associate professor of medicine at Bagai Medical College and Hospital of uh, Karachi in Pakistan. And this happened back in 1983 and 1984 as a surgical assistant material manager in an intern center. Uh, pro- uh, um, process and supervisor at Edgar Medical uh, Center in Chicago back in 1996 and 2000. And from 2000 to 2000, he was a research administration portfolio manager, married grant administrator intern and administrative office and uh, intern director of a nonprofit organization since 2009. He has been working as um, the director of research and uh, compliance in Chicago. He has been nominated for and won several awards at national and international level. Wow, this is incredible. And his spare time, he enjoys cooking, photography, what a contradiction, eh? Got to have that artistic side, and watching sport such as cricket. <laughs> uh, he lives in Chicago, as I mentioned earlier, with his wife and two sons. And uh, he wants to find out more about uh, Dr. Ken. You could always visit in an incredible website, Doctors, uh, drcan.com. Obviously, the links will be here on authors that web- website. And obviously, uh, his book. Uh, that um, it's on YouTube channels as well. So very, very accomplished. So let's welcome him uh, with a wonderful, wonderful round of applause because he definitely uh, deserves it. And uh, yeah, a very accomplished fellow. I feel very humbled to be talking to him today. So let's welcome him. (laughs) Hello, hello, Dr. Chan. My goodness, look at you. Uh, welcome, welcome to the Author's Den. How are you doing this afternoon? Uh, thank you so much, Lazy. Thank you so much. Uh, nice talking with you. And I'm ready for an interview today about <laughs> my new fourth book. So so we can start. And then you have yes. given my very good introduction to the uh, <laughs> listeners yes. and audience. I so am. ultimately they know who I am. Yeah, please go ahead. 
Yeah, I'm very, very impressed about your background. My goodness, what a repertoire, what an incredible background, uh, what an accomplished man you are. Very, very uh, honored to have you here. But one of the things that I love to ask and connect with my author is just to have, you know, the personal side of you, uh, medicine, doctor, being a physician, uh, I mean, you, you're a pulmonologist. Wow. Uh, was it always a desired from you or was it something that was imposed by your parents? Because I know I have lots of friends from Pakistan, from India, and I know uh, some of some of the parents, is you have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be uh, a physician, you have to be an architect. But those are the things that I know that install, is installed in, in your life since childhood. Or you had an experience as as a young person and you thought, I want to be able to help your humanity. And uh, you went against your family's uh, desires for you. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. So uh, I was uh, eight kids in my home. I was having seven elder, my brother and sisters. And uh, in the beginning, I was not going to the school or I was not having any, uh, so I was not having any uh, school, college, anything else in the early phases, and I was just at home and uh, uh, just uh, thinking and talking and just playing all the time and until the age of 12 years. And after that, I start my school, and in the early my phases, my father uh, taught me some mathematics, English, and some other languages, and after that, I went to the school and I got admission in the fifth grade. And in the beginning, my school was uh, in the morning shift. Uh, within the next four or five months, it uh, uh, it goes into the evening hours because they are opening the classes for the girls in the morning. So in that way, I got an opportunity in the morning free time. And then I spoke with my mother. I want to help you and I want to see what you are doing the whole day and all those things to have uh, get uh, some idea. So she asked me that, did you finish your homework and everything? I say yes, I did everything. And uh, then uh, I started working uh, with her in the home for all domestic things and helping her in the kitchen and home environment organization and all those things. So in that way, I learned a lot. And then I noticed that my mother was uh, uh, very perfect in making the food and all those things and organizing the house. And technically, it was a full-time job uh, and uh, preparing the uh, three-time food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for all of us. We are all going at the same time in the morning for the college and school and everyone. So she was uh, taking care for our choices even that in that time frame and lunch and dinner. So actually, I was very much impressed. And then my father also gave me task uh, to do some uh, uh, electric and gas bill to uh, go to the bank and deposit and industry. So I start learning how uh, I can survive in this environment and all those things. So in that way, that was uh, the beginning. And after that, I noticed that my mother was preparing food without using any measurement or anything else. So ultimately, I was uh, uh, getting interest, and at the same time, uh, I noticed that she was preparing four or five different uh, types of the foods, uh, and then uh, she was very perfect in the time management, and uh, no food is burned, and no, nothing is happening with, uh, in the time management, and everything is and everything is well organized. So this basic time management and organizational skill at the home, I learned from my father and my mother. So it's a brief introduction. Yes, and and I guess you're. I can tell your mother and your father had a lot of influence in you, a lot of positive influence, which is phenomenal. I wish that all of the parents uh, are able to have that such a good influence on their kids. And unfortunately, we all know that this world is not perfect. Class is not perfect. Not everybody is meant to be parents. There's a lot of parents that, you know, they put their kids down or they don't know how to be parents and it's challenging. But in your case, um, you know, you're so blessed. It worked out to your advantage. And uh, here you are, you know, many years later uh, with a, a full resume and uh, of, of accomplishment. And now you're a writer. So 
uh, I assume and never assume, so let me ask you, are you retired now? Um, maybe by next year. Okay, so you still you're still working, you're still working. being uh, proactive, yeah. yes, uh, partially working. Um, so if you are working, then my next question, Dr. Can, is, uh, um, uh, you know, how do you have time? This is what, your fourth book, uh, writing, I assume, as a, as a physician, you know, you have to write reports, you have to write things, and uh, uh, um a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, documentation needs to be and and, and uh, journals and things like that. Uh, but writing is something very different when you are making a book. Where did that inspiration came from, Doctor Ken? Yes. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I am not uh, working as a uh, practicing physician in the United States, and I am working in the administration and leadership role. And it helped me a lot to understand about the leadership intuition, how to make the decision, how to analyze, and how uh, to gain the self-confidence. And uh, there is no fear of failure. And uh, all those things, uh, the basic uh, concept about the leadership, I learned here in the United States, as well as when I worked in Saudi Arabia, I was also hold the hospital administration all positions, chief of medicine, director of medical services, and the direct hospital director, all as well as pulmonologist attending internal medicine, and as well as uh, <clears throat> the psychiatric position. So ultimately, it was a huge task, huge work, and I start getting some uh, interest in my in the management, hospital care and management from Saudi Arabia, and that's why when I go to Pakistan, I was associate professor of medicine. Uh, at Bakai Medical College, and I was teaching medical students, dental students, and uh, <clears throat> in that way, uh, I learned a lot from tutoring and educating and uh, holding the class of 100 students, and uh, it was very interesting and very uh, helping me to understand at the student level what they feel and how I am going to teach them so they can have a maximum benefit and they are going to become a best doctor in future like me. And I'm very happy with my medical practice and everything in Saudi Arabia and Pakistan. And I treated and managed more than 100,000 patients in all areas of medicines and surgical uh, things, all those things. So ultimately, is this wide experience. So I have a clinical intuition also. So in that way, I got the two types of the intuition. One is the clinical intuition as a doctor and physician managing and treating the lot of patient population and all diseases. And I diagnose more than 100 very rare cases without any lab tests or without anything because I was working in the remote area in and that places the most of the time we don't have the laboratory uh, uh, or CT scan or any facilities to get uh, treated the immediate emergency treatment to the patient. So that's all about the clinical thing. And now here I'm working mm -hmm. as a non-practicing uh, uh, physician in the United States. So ultimately I work in a leadership role so this is all entire things and uh, uh but it's still it is a lot of work and i'm working as a full time and, and yeah so next uh, year i'm planning to get retired now your next question is that how possible i write all these four books so i will That's just tell right. you a very interesting thing yeah so i wrote in my <laughs> book uh, uh that at the age of 15 years it was uh june july it was summer vacation over there and at that time, I was reading one fiction novel, and it was so good, I read four, five times in the next two, three days. And after that, I feel one time that uh, uh, in future, uh, I want to write a book like this. And that was only one time thought came to my mind, and that was my most luckiest and acceptable time to accept that reality in my mind at the subconscious level that... Uh, I am going to write a book similar to that type of fiction novel or something like that. And at that 15 years age, you know that it's a very young age, and I never think about all those things like that. So in that way, uh, this was very, very good idea. And after that, I noticed that two, three days, I start getting more motivation, more energy to get more knowledge and education to fulfill all those requirements to become a future author or writer or something like that. The first book is uh, Unlocking the Natural Born Leader's Ability, and I think last year we had that interview about That's my right. first book, Unlocking the Natural. 
Your name yeah. sounds very familiar. I and I'm looking at your website, and uh, I remember yeah. seeing something like this. Wow, look at you. Okay, so now we've and, gone through uh, several books, and uh, you are uh, talking about the uh, brand brand new book, which is called. Yes. Uh, so first of all, I will just give you a little idea, a few seconds. The first book was Unlocking the Natural Born Leader's Ability. And in that right. book, I describe how I become a natural born leader. And the second book is Am I Burned Out at Work? A Self-Care Solution. Because in the industry, organizations, CEOs and doctors, physicians, they are committing suicide. And they are having mm -hmm. a lot of trouble to perform very well at the job. And they are committing suicide, anxiety, depression. So that's why I wrote uh, to favor them to provide a self-care solution, how they can prevent themselves from the acute onset of the burnout or the late onset of burnout, which lead to involve into the divorce or uh, anxiety, depression, or suicidal thought and committing suicide. And my right. third book is the yeah the third book is uh, shaping the future of the global leadership. And that book is uh, giving some idea about how we are going to organize and reorganize our world political leadership uh, at one platform and then provide some basic uh, concept about the leadership role and how they become a more confident leader. So that's the third book. And now I advance my leadership book into the fourth level as a global political leadership and the public an essential guide to learn the necessary skills and man uh, mindset. So this book is basically providing a global political leadership training program. Because I noticed that when our leaders, they are not fully trained in this particular job. And that's why the problem is uh, they are incompetent, they are hesitant to make the decision, they are afraid to make the uh, uh, decisions and fear of failure. So these things are not good to conduct our world, the world business. So that's why this book is related to that particular thing and how we are going to train our global political leadership for the betterment of our world as well as to prevent wars. Wow. Are uh, you there? It's a very, oh, oh, okay. It's, yeah. It's a very complex yes. book and obviously uh, the audience is probably wondering uh, what is in it, as as always, right? What is in it for me? How I, how can I take advantage of uh, this book? How can it benefit me? Who is the best audience for uh, your fourth book? Yeah, the whole world, everyone, every kid, every ordinary people, housewives and political leaders, non-political leaders, executives, directors, whoever they are working in any capacity, making the decision. So this book is going to give benefit as a whole nations of the world because I make it general, this book, and that's why at the end of the title I add intentionally the public because I am not a politician. I am not affiliated with any political parties, but as a public, because as everyone, I noticed that one, they are frustrated for several years because of our global political leaders. They are having a total failure of resolve any issue, any conflict or dispute. And whenever there is a failure, in the democracy or diplomacy, it is going to lead a world war. And that's why it was in my anticipation for last four years. That's why I wrote my third book, Shaping the Future of Global Leadership. And I, in 2019, I mentioned in the book that we are approaching towards third world war. And now this is another time. We are moving fast forward towards that's right. having a the third world war yeah and then everybody is having a new the superpowers they are having conflict and dispute and they are and the united nation is total failure to stop or suggest any solution to avoid the war or avoid the dispute 
and then in this book i provided so many things like a general knowledge to the political leaders uh, they must know what things are important to know and then it is also providing how they can make themselves more polished more positive thinker leaders and then in what direction and dimension they are going to deal the other world leaders they have to go they have to go through the uh, different process when they meet the other leaders they have to know their culture in mm-hmm. what country they are going to meet with them and what because every culture every leader they have a different thinking different environment to grow up so they they have to know each other before they can talk and they know the culture of the other country also so in that way they are not going to provoke anyone absolutely in this way and then we can yeah well, one of the things that i i don't want to forget uh dr ken is uh the the name of the book is called the global political leadership and the public an essential guide to learn the necessary skills and a mindset uh I don't see it on your website. I go through, but I can see it in certain places. So where can people uh find your book first of all? Yes, so this book is uh, uh the e-book is available at Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Okay. And I'm I'm working with the uh, soft cover and hard cover copies of the book. Maybe in next 2 3 weeks it will be available at Barnes and Noble. because it's a brand new book and right. uh, yes yeah. and then uh, luckily i have the book trailer also uh, from uh, some book reviewers the professional people they review this book and they make uh, the testimonial about this book what they read and what and, they and, find in this book that's right and one of the things that i actually because it is brand new obviously you've had a uh, closest friends and maybe family members or maybe people that love to criticize uh your work any feedback at all that you have received from somebody who you trust and know that they can be truthful and say take a look at this book and read it and tell me what you think any feedback at all for people that are listening to us have an idea what what feedback have you received so far Yeah this book is uh, so far my manuscript was reviewed by more than 100 uh, uh, reviewers and wow. uh, uh, they, they provided me a written uh, their uh, uh, reviews about the book and uh, it is all uh, five stars and uh, so as soon as the hard and soft cover copy will be available then the reviews at the good read side will be displayed all these 100 reviews and then if uh, anyone wants to go and check at the youtube channel and uh, they put the title just the global political leader and the public by salar khan they can find a uh, 3 and a half minutes video uh, testimonial wow. about the three different reviewers what they read and it is just like a documentary film like uh, so in that way everybody knows exactly what this book is about and how we are approaching towards the third world war and the destructions created by political leaders in the world and it is a total reflection of what is going to happen in next one or two years it is a mm-hmm. fear from mm-hmm. me and that's why it is reflected in my book and then reflected in the reviewers reviews also they are also uh after reading this says that oh we are not aware about all these things are ongoing but uh, thank you for writing that book and provide all those information for the general public the people to know exactly uh, where we are approaching mhm and i'm glad that you brought that this up uh, uh dr ken because one of the things that a lot of people are not aware and they uh, i would i would use uh, bravely use the word oblivious of what we should be encountering and I completely agree with you I think we are definitely uh encountering uh, you know uh, uh, an issue or a global uh situation and uh I've seen I've seen it the writing is on the wall uh and I think right now it's a lot of uh mindful mind over matter 
Uh, it is definitely a, a war that is happening right now within people's mind more than just guns and things like that. Um, and I, I, I'm glad that somebody like yourself is writing about it because then uh, it's not like I didn't know it wasn't a word. I didn't see the sign, uh, and the signs are very oblivious, very abrupt in your face. Uh, so there is political issues and health issues and uh, all over, all over. You don't have to watch television, which I don't do it anymore. Uh, I, I'm the type of person that research. One of the things, what what would you say is one of the things that people can help themselves other than, other than reading your book to get more knowledge, to be more informed? What are the things that you think that people should do to not live, you know, inside of the hole and, and, and say uh, this is not happening? Yeah, because everybody is in a denial phase. And the question is that the different part That's of the world, right. the people, they, yeah, and the different people, they listen their own country radio or TV news. And it is all bias, I'm sorry to say. Every media is projecting their own nation, their own country. And in that way, sometimes they are telling a lie and giving the wrong news to the public and the people. And uh, here I noticed that the uh, common general public and people, they do not have any uh, analytical skill to analyze what the situation is going on, why there is a Russia and Ukraine war is started, what are the reasons behind it, why the United Nations failed to stop the war, why the countries of the world, they are all divided. We have 195 countries in the world. and. Uh, uh, and uh, 193 countries they have uh, uh, recognized by the United Nations. So ultimately, it's a huge country and populations and everyone and a lot of countries, they have a new also. And if uh, I'm afraid, what happened during the First World War and Second World War? And now again, if some leader who is uh, uh, not sensible, and sometimes we may have some destructive type of personalities in the leadership. They may go and just just uh, put the hand on the switch on, and then they can blast two, three new any part of the world. And ultimately, again, we will go back to years behind. And what we notice the consequences of the Second World War. It is still ongoing. The people who that's died, right. We're uh, still we're still dealing with that after so many years. Yeah, that's right. So, so this is the problem. So, we, somebody has to address. And now I will. T I am going to tell you as a doctor why I have all these uh, political things, analysis, and everything. Whatever I wrote in the book, mostly it is based on my 55 years experience by reading uh, the newspaper and uh, listening the TV, radio news. And then I, when I was young in Pakistan, 1970, I wrote in my book also. And then uh, I was, uh, uh, my father brought radio and it was kept in my room. I was preparing for my high school and medical college preparation. At the evening, 8 o'clock, there is a BBC news. I, me and my father sit together and listen. And then I ask questions to my father. He explained the things. And we are getting newspaper, English newspaper. We are reading and then we can discuss whatever it is going on. So every day I was in uh, in contact, and luckily uh, I was having a very good memory. So ultimately I remember all those happening is, is starting from 1970 until now. So you yes. can imagine 53 years I was in connected with that of the news of what is happening in the whole world, not only in Pakistan or any local country. I was dealing with the whole countries of the world. So ultimately, I, my mind is processed a huge data during all those years. And I have seen a politicians, they are coming and going after completing their tenure, either five year or four year in any country in the world. And nobody asked them what they did, why they put the people in war, why they are uh, having a huge ammunition and fighting each other. For what purpose? The ordinary people, they are the sufferers. They are suffering yes. a lot because of the consequences of the war. So ultimately, we are facing 
the price hike for all food stuff, oil, gas, everything you know that. So yes. it is totally reflected the general public. So why the general public is not knowing what is going on and who is going to get benefit of these wars and fighting? Yeah, yes. it, it goes back to, you know, the rich wants to be richer and they want to maintain, uh, you know, it's, it, if I believe, and this is my opinion, not everyone's opinion, I understand that I believe that uh, the love of money is the root of all evil, that we read that in, in the Bible, not the money is bad, you could do amazing things with it, but uh, the, the love of it and the more you want it, that's what triggers uh, those all complications uh, around the world, and right now there there's a fight for power uh, in such an incredible and horrific way uh, that the manipulation of all different places of the world is taking place right now, and and it's like you said, the uh, analytical skills of some people it's it, it's it's too much for some people to handle. I have talked when I and I, everyone we're not talking politics here. This is just a conversation. It's an incredible book. I will highly recommend if you want to be a little bit curious and just find out a little bit or, or be aware of what's going on, so it doesn't get you price to price. Please pick up the book, the Global Political Leadership and the public, an essential guide to learn, I love the title, the necessary skills and mindset so by uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Salar Akan. And so, yeah, so it is essential to be able to, to be aware. And uh, when things, when you're prepared, when you're aware of things that not, does not catch you by surprise, and uh, I, I didn't expect this. People that say that I didn't expect it, this, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? How do I prepare myself? How do I defend myself? How do I feed myself? Those are the ones that are suffering the most. And I'm so glad, uh, Dr. Ken, that you're able to bring this to light. And I know it's a little bit controversial. A lot of things are nowadays, so I'm 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 becoming used to it, to uh, bring in controversial uh, issues to the public, but it is a must. Somebody has to do it, and I'm so glad it's you. So glad it's you. Again, you, the book, you can find it on Amazon uh, in uh, Barnes & Noble uh, as a downloaded format, Kindle, obviously, edition, but uh, he will have it also on the um uh, cover as well as a hard cover for you to be able to uh, give it to your loved one as well. I know that uh, there's a lot of topics that we can we can talk about this, uh, Dr. Ken. There's a, a variety, a plethora of of, of uh, ways that we could tackle this, and we can talk about. But one of the things that uh, I love to find out when you enter this t subject with friends and family. I know that those are the worst ones sometimes. Sometimes, what do they say? Uh, um, are you becoming a little bit too fanatic? Are you? Uh, are they seeing the light with you, or or they they reject your ideas? What is the the uh, reception from from people close to you? So whoever the, <clears throat> they read my this book, my manuscript, I forwarded them, and uh, they gave a very positive, strong response, and they are very happy. And this is that this is a timely book, and this book is not criticizing any specific uh, political leader in the world, because the leaders they also come from the public. That's true. And the majority of the right, and the majority of the countries we have a democracy. So they are also coming through the process of democracy, whatever it is, either it is good or bad. I'm not debating that one. I'm not a politician I'm, and I'm not affiliated with any political party. But my thing is that uh, how we are going to prevent the massive killing due to the war, use of nuke, I am afraid, use of so many other uh, dangerous weapons and biological weapons and killing the humanity on earth. And then who is going to live on this earth? And then the question is that uh, if two, three, four countries, they start fighting for the supremacy to become a superpower, who, so what? So what if they become a superpower? Who cares? Because we are all human beings. Nobody is alive on earth. Everyone is suffering. 
So what the leader will do at their circumstances? If two, three countries put the nuke together, I'm afraid. And this time it could be a dangerous if anyone is going to use any nuke because of all those things. And economy is already down. Everybody is poor and the cost of living is very high. So as a general public, so this book is going to provide a heads up. The I public, the ordinary people, yeah. So they are going to read and understand that what exactly it is and what is their role. And their what role will their be in the next. How to prepare. That's right. How to prepare and how they are going to select the leaders for their uh, country as a president and prime minister anywhere in the world. So if the public okay. is very well educated, then they, we are going to have something good. And now, I can explain you this book is providing the three common goals. If anyone is going to read, and I suggested one organization to take care about all global political leadership and their credentials, their education, that organ, independent organization, and that's mean I put in my book is independent global leadership organization. That organization check the credentials of the upcoming leaders or any executives who wants to become a leader in future. And then they can uh, evaluate and then they can educate them, they can train them, and then they are going to evaluate everything is fine. And prior to allow them to participate in election or selection process, they have to be checked and evaluated by uh, psychologists or psychiatrists to make sure they are mentally sound, they are not having a destructive personality or anything else. because our leaders, the world is in the hands of our leaders. They are making all those decisions. The public elect or select them. That's but right. But after that, after that, what they are doing it, we don't know. As an a doctor, as an uh, attorney, the, we have yeah, we have our uh, uh, credentialing uh, organization. They are licensing organization. They are checking our credentials. If you do some wrongdoing, we are accountable for that one. So why not our political leaders? They are going to be accountable through That's that particular right. organization, which I suggested. And I suggested yes. that how they are going to um, um, uh, select the criteria to selection for these leaders uh, to go for the greater role to become a politician. And then they have to continue and check and balance and they can provide continuing education. So they are mind is not going to be the rest uh, uh, rusted because they have to learn uh, the training and what is going on and new technique and tools to improve their knowledge caliber understanding and how they are going to gain their confidence self confidence decision making is also very important so this is the particular part related to our political leaders and now the question is that in next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, what we will are going to do for our new generation, upcoming generation. For them, uh, I suggested in a separate chapter in the book that when uh, any family decided to become a parent, they have a, uh, want to uh, have the baby or kid, so they can start working on that. And they must know that uh, during the pregnancy, the mother should not use the drug, alcohol, or anything else to avoid disable kids to the, to create and born in future and it is another burden for the uh, government uh, in whatever the country it is happening so we we need a healthy kid healthy mind and then these kids when they grow and they will learn and grow through my book the training tool and educational tool and the parents at home provide a good environment healthy environment to the newborn baby, they can start playing. And I mentioned some neurological nerve development and brain connection. And in the early phases, they have billions, nine billion neurons connected. So in that way, they can learn four or five languages. If some parents, they want their kids to be a multi-language. I know, yeah. and, and the, the, the kids are so powerful. My kids know four languages and because we started early. Dr. Kan, you know what? It's always an incredible pleasure uh, talking to you and, and getting so much information. You are uh, a, a vast uh, 
uh, wallet or, or suitcase of knowledge, and you can you can talk to us uh, forever. But unfortunately, we're starting to come uh, start uh, get run out of time. I think you what you have to say and and what you contribute to society is incredible, and I think everybody should log in and should check this book out. Everyone is called the Global Politics Leadership and the Public. Uh, an essential guide to learn. I love that word, to learn the necessities and skills of mindset. We are ready and uh, very close to something, unfortunately, not too, too pleasable to, to, uh, uh, to happen in the next couple of years. So I think that you should, like the book says, learn to get prepared and to be uh, ready for whatever it comes. And uh, we need to obviously, like Dr. Kent said, uh, get our kids ready to a, a different a different mindset, uh, healthy mothers and, and ready to start a brand new generation. So I, I think that this is imperative. I want to thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, sharing again more knowledge and more information and 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 contributing in such an incredible way to this world you're so valuable and i appreciate you so much any last word uh dr ken yeah so <clears throat> at the same time when this uh, new future generation will grow up with the supervision of the environment at home with the parents and all and then when they become a professional, any profession, anything, engineer, doctor, something like that. So they go through this leadership and understanding process. Ultimately, they are going to be a best professional leaders. And then from our global political leaders, they are also coming from the bottom onward. So ultimately, I need in future the positive thinker, a strong decision maker, and very much honest, sincere, sacrificing leaders to conduct or to run the business on our earth so we can make our earth to live like a paradise or one of the best uh, earth to live with harmony and all together and as a one community, not antagonist with each other, not fighting for the control or any supremacy on each other. Because it That's is right. an individual person ego also, we have to uh, not go for the ego, ego to start fight or dispute. Yes. Yeah. So that's my Wonderful. last message, and hopefully I we will find something good solution. We shall. All right. Thanks for it. Keep- People like you definitely encourage us and give us hope. I think uh, it's it's uh, it's a great last message. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate you. All right. Nice talking with you. Thank you, Lizzie. Okay. Bye now. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to another exciting episode of the Author's Den podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show so you don't miss any of our future episodes. That's all for now. We'll see you next time.